Hey geeks and gamers, today I'm doing more of an off-the-cuff style video today. Today, how many times will I say today in this intro? One more time, today. Uh, because I want to talk about a game that came out today. There it is again. Uh, that game is Llamasoft the Jeff Mentor Story. Um, it is a game, I'm, I'm going to say game in quotations, game by Digital Eclipse, and I'm going to talk about it today and maybe tell you why you should care, uh, and maybe why you should pick it up. Now, this isn't a review. I don't feel comfortable reviewing this game, and I, it, I don't even feel comfortable calling it a game. What this is, is a interactive documentary. That's, that's how Digital Eclipse um, pitches it. And it's the second in their, I think they call it their Gold Master series. Uh, yeah, their Gold Master series, which began with the making of K uh, Karatika, which I didn't play, I didn't play or experience that. Uh, but this one greatly interested me because it's Llama Soft and Jeff Mentor. Um, last year, I did review Atari Fifty, which uh, Digital Eclipse also did, and I've I've really enjoyed digital clips and what they've done um, they've also worked on some of my favorite game collections within the past uh you know five ten years um and i will tell you the ones that i really liked um my favorite outside of this one and atari 50 that, the, uh, that they've done was um, the SNK 40th anniversary, which I talked about on the button mappers before, and also the Samurai Showdown Neo Geo collection I also talked about over on the button mappers. Uh, they've also done like the Ninja Turtle Calabunga collection, the Street Fighter 30th, the Mega Man Legacy collection, the Disney Afternoon collection. They've done a lot of cool um, collections and experiences recently, but this one is their first one of 2024. It kind of follows. It, it kind of falls in line with the Atari 50 experience, which if you watched my review of Atari 50, I was very impressed with that. But it singles in on one single developer, Llamasoft and Jeff Minter. Um, the Atari 50 one kind of went through the old history of Atari. You had like a little documentary you could go through and you could play games. This does the exact same thing, but I'm not comfortable reviewing it because it is the story of Jeff Minter. And I feel like to review this game experience documentary thing would be weird because it's it's not meant to be a game it's meant to be a story an experience that you go through and yes you can play games throughout his library but it's more meant to sort of experience his library and experience his history jeff minter is a um indie developer that's been working in the space for 40 something years uh he started out on the early uh pcs i'm thinking like the commodore 64 zx spectrum and stuff um the i'm not as familiar with llama soft and jeff mentor as i am atari but i am th i'm familiar with jeff mentor through atari if, if that makes sense um prior to this collection i've only played a few of the games that the guy has made uh, mainly Tempest 2000, Tempest 4000, and Aka R, which I also reviewed last year. Um, and I've, I, it, it turns out I've, I've also played one of his um, Commodore games um, on an Evercade cartridge before, and I didn't realize that was him. But, um, so yeah, I, I haven't really experienced a lot of the guy's library before. So, while I'm talking, if you see footage of games that it looks like I don't know what I'm doing... It's probably because that's my first time playing it. I, I recorded my, my first time playing this uh, this documentary. And it, more than likely, yes. <laughs> that's footage of the first time I've ever experienced it. I've had a lot of fun going through this, though. Jeff Minter is a really interesting guy. It's kind of fun to go through and see how much uh, of himself he's put into his games over the years. And how many cool ideas he's had. Uh, the documentary side of things is what really impressed me. Just like Atari 50, you have like a timeline you can go through with four different chapters. And there's fun little things to read and learn about and videos to watch. Um, I'm also not going to show very many of the videos. I think the only videos I have recorded were from the very beginning 
of the timeline. That's also because I don't want to spoil it. If I, and I take it a lot of you probably ha don't know the history of Llamasoft, you know, as opposed to like Atari. I want you to be able to go in and experience this documentary the way it's meant to be experienced. Which is, you know, sitting down, reading, and watching the documentary sections of the, the game. And really experiencing it for yourself. So, that's also why I don't feel comfortable reviewing it. So, I guess today is more of my r impressions and thoughts on Alamosoft, the Jeff Mentor story. It's really fucking cool. Um, I, I need to go back and play the other one they did for the Gold Master series. I didn't realize that came out. The making of Karateka? Karate I hope I'm saying that right. Um, I I have never I did not experience that. I need to go back and try to experience that. But this one I got day one because I saw it came out. I got it on the Xbox Series S. Um, it's also on the PlayStation platforms, uh, Steam, PC, you know, Switch, I believe. Um, the only console that it's not on that I kind of wish it was on was is the Atari VCS, mainly because Atari 50 came on on the VCS as well, and that's where I, I have that. So I kind of wish this this would come to VCS. Um, Digital Eclipse is owned by Atari, so maybe they you know and Jeff Minter has made Atari games that are on the VCS, so maybe they could work something out. So if it comes to VCS down the line, I would definitely repurchase this for that console to have like the joystick and kind of. Because a lot of these games are older PC games, so... I mean, basically all of them, except for, like, two. So I, I would love to have that experience playing it with an, you know, with an actual joystick. But it's been really great. Um, Digital Eclipse clearly knows, you know, what they're doing when it comes to game emulation. And to see a collection that's mainly made up of older PC games is really refreshing. You know, I'm... I've played all the NES games that I, you know, probably care about playing by this point. But, you know, games for the uh, Commodore 64, for the ZX Spectrum, for the Sinclair, for the the Vic-20. Like, there are some really obscure, P, uh, you know, older PCs here that I've never had a chance to experience because I live in America and I'm not really... Um, you know, those those PCs weren't as big here. I think there's even one game that came out for the Conix multi-system, which I believe was was cancelled or something, which is crazy. Um, there's also Atari, uh, not Atari, uh, Tempest 2000 for the Atari Jaguar, which was also on Atari 50. Fantastic game. That's here. And then uh, Digital Eclipse themselves, they did a remaster of Grid Runner, uh, which is an early Jeff Mentor game. And I did, like, a whole new version, and it's really freaking cool to play. Um, I experienced a few of the games so far. I haven't played all of them yet. Again, it just came out today. But um, I wanted to try a few of them out. Uh, I played uh, Attack of the Mutant Camels, which reminded me a lot of The Empire Strikes Back on the, on the Atari 2600. That was pretty cool. I played... Um, the original version of Grid Runner. I, I think I played the Atari 8-bit version. Um, that was a really good, like, centipede-style game. Sheep in Space. Uh, I didn't understand fully, but I need to get back into it and try to learn that one. Uh, one of the games that really got me was... and I, I don't know if I'm, like, if I'm saying this right, but it was Hoover Boover? <laughs> or Hoover Bobber? I don't know how to say it. It's basically a game um, where you have to steal your neighbor's lawnmower and mow your lawn without them catching you which was you know what i've i don't, I don't think i've ever laughed so hard at a uh, commodore 64 game as i have that game that game was genuinely funny and fun um what his earliest game 3d 3d which was like a really early maze game was really cool um a laser zone was fun um Aridus Alpha, that's the one that I had played on uh, Evercade, and um, I didn't play much of it on, on Evercade, but I did play a little bit, and that was one that I didn't know he had worked on, you know, that that was his game, so that was a pleasant surprise. And of course I played some Tempest 2000, because why not, that game's fucking awesome, and the Grid Runner remastered is also really cool. But there's still, you know, that's, that's a handful of games out of 42 that I still have yet to go through and experience, um... And I've only experienced the first part of the documentary timeline at this point. 
But so far, it's really fucking cool how they did this. And if they, if Digital Eclipse decides to single out, to, if, if Digital Eclipse decides to really focus in on singular developers like this and give them this treatment, I am all in. Uh, because Jeff Minter is a very cool game developer, one of the first indie developers, really. And, you know, he's still at it. And it's so cool to have, like, a project like this that really can show his legacy, you know, in, in the way that it, it needs to be shown. Unlike, you know, if they just made a video documentary, it wouldn't do his, his legacy justice because you wouldn't have access to really try and experience those older games. Um, so I would love to see other developers get this treatment. Which ones? I don't know. I can't think off the top of my head. But absolutely, I'd be down for more of this. Um, so if you're interested in this, it's $30 brand new. And I'm sure it'll go on sale eventually. But $30, that's not a lot, honestly. That's that's half the price of a brand new game. Um, and you get 42 classic Jeff Minter, Llama Soft games along with the documentary um, section of the of the of the game and it's very unique it's still just just like atari 50 it is still the best version of games preservation i have ever seen out of uh in any 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 uh game or or like developer digital clips really has this down pat um they've they've impressed me more and more as they go on. Like I said, I was a big fan of the uh, 40th anniversary SNK one they did and the Neo Geo uh, Samurai Showdown collection they did. Um, both those were still like fantastic when they came out. But it, it, it seems like they just get the preservation side of things down better and better as they go along. And yeah, I'm, I'm blown away. So I really want to see this do well and I really want to see more projects like this because I, I feel like this is what we need for a lot of games preservation is stuff like this where you know i can easily go through and experience games that i've never experienced before and learn you know learn about developers that you know stories that i may have never learned about um you know i've like, like i said i've been a fan of um the games i have played by him like last year i reviewed the new aka r which he did which i really liked i kind of i kind of wish that was on here but i get it you can already buy it on modern consoles so I really liked that one, and I really liked his uh, Tempest 2000 and, and Tempest 4000. Um, so I was already a fan of Llama Soft, but now I get to really dive in and really learn about Jeff Mentor and his creative vision and the the weird animals he puts in his games and what made him so special. You know, it's very cool. So, yeah, if you're interested, let me know in the comments. And... Uh, let me know if there's any other developers you would like to see this treatment for, because there, there's pl you know there's tons of developers out there that I bet kind of could use this this time in the in the spotlight. It's very cool. Um, I'm probably gonna go play more of this today. Like I said, this is more of, of an impression. So I haven't experienced everything this package has to offer yet, but I was really blown away, and I really just wanted to talk about it and you know share it with with you guys. So you should care about this. If you are if you care about gaming in general, you should care about this because this is the right approach for games preservation. With that said, I'm going to go play some more LamaSoft. Um, I, there was one that I really liked. What the hell was it called? Hold on. I have, I have the list up here. Um, it, was, it was one where you're playing as a llama and you had to shoot things as the llama. Uh, it was like... Uh, Metagalactic Llamas Battle at the Edge of Time, which is not only the best name for a game I've ever heard, but it was a damn fun game. So, I'm gonna go play some more. See you guys later. Bye.